Hello everybody and welcome to Easy Medicine. In today's video we are going to continue our journey through the human body by watching the awesome show Cells at Work. Today's topic is food poisoning and it's going to be super interesting to see the different mechanisms our body has to prevent further damage after food poisoning. For those of you who are new, my name is Karsten, I'm a fourth year medical student and on this channel I'm explaining medicine and the human body in easy terms and I'm also reacting to medical TV shows. If that sounds good, consider subscribing. P.S. 88% of you are not subscribed right now. Please go ahead, it's completely free. And exams are coming in for me right now. So I'm going to be very busy. I'm trying to upload once a week still and try to continue our series with Tells at Work. But at this moment, I cannot promise that it will be every week right on point. I try my best. Oh, that's a stomach. Yeah, it is. <sighs> Just great. I love how they displayed the stomach. Our stomach really looks like this. Here's a picture from the real stomach and you see that there are really these folds and this is greatly resembled by these rocky formations on the gastric wall. And the gastric acid is secreted and has two main functions. Number one, it, is, it sterilizes all the food that's coming inside and by that killing a lot of bacteria that are not acid stable. Bacteria can be acid soluble and they can be acid stable though they can survive the gastric acid but mostly bacteria are killed by the gastric acid. And another function of course is to dissolve the food and start digestion. In the stomach the digestion is started by pepsin. Pepsin dissolves the end of proteins. The rest of the digestion is done in the small intestine because the amylase to digest carbohydrates and the lipase to digest lipids is released from the pancreas and is just entering in the duodenum, so the small intestine. Oh! <laughs> ah! <laughs> First guess of the moment, I think it's an eosinophil from the color, but let's see. Surely our hero is on time. So she is an eosinophil and the reason she has such a rough time with bacteria is that she can in theory phagocytose but this is not her main function. You see the, the spear she got? This spear is for attachment to parasites. Eosinophils have the main function in parasitic infection. They can attach to these large, large parasites in relation to all the other cells and then can release cytotoxic mediators to attack the large, um, the large parasite because phagocytosis is not effective there anymore. Oh no. They're bullying her. They're really bullying her. That's not fair. All cells are different and all serve different purposes. It's like you cannot judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree. This also counts for all humans, so always remember this. Okay, who's he? Oh, it's a basophil. <laughs> okay, now we got all our three granulocytes together. We got the neutrophil, we got the eosinophil, and now we got the basophil. Basophils are really, really rare, and they are mediators of inflammation. Up on any kind of stimulus, they degranulate, and by this, mediate the inflammation and though causing the dilation of the vessels so other inflammatory cells, speaking the neutrophils for example, can reach the scene of inflammation. And if you look at him, he kind of looks like some uh, shinobi from the clan Aburame, you know, Naruto, maybe? 
遺産で殺しきれないほどの菌が侵入してきたということですかあそそうなのか Yeah, so this is the definition of food poisoning. There are always bacteria on food. We can never prevent this because they are all in the air and on all surfaces. So our gastric acid normally neutralizes all the, the small amount of bacteria that is there. But if there is a sufficiently high enough number, the gastric juices cannot reach all of the bacteria. And so they reach um, the small intestine and by this they can invade the surrounding tissues. Very dangerous and needs sufficiently and effective measurements. As I just know this show, she will have her big moment. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> So let's see. <laughs> oh. Again, I don't know Anisakis. Maybe this is some regional thing where this is more parasites that are found over in Japan. I'm, I'm not really sure, but I was not taught about this. I know, but I know a lot of um, parasites, and these parasites always have a comp complex life cycle and normally we as humans are accidental hosts so they normally have two different hosts and mostly one is eating the other so they can reach back into the intestines and can replicate but as humans are normally not eaten by any animal we are definitive and end hosts so they are trapped inside our human body so you see now that this is much, much bigger than all the bacteria we have encountered up to this point. Let's quickly have a look how parasites really look inside human tissue and how they can not be phagocytosed because they are so big. Let's so guys, right now we're looking at striated muscle tissue and let's see if I can quickly find the parasite. Yeah, right here. Okay, this is striated muscle tissue and right here you see the parasite. You can literally see the worm inside and right now you see here around like this, these are our neutrophils. They are really, really small and now you can understand why they cannot phagocytose something that is a thousand times bigger maybe. I don't know exactly, but it is much, much bigger. Now, if this would be active, we would see eosinophils around here to attack the parasite. But this is a latent infection and here's a capsule around the parasite. So it is a latent infection and there's currently no immune reaction going on. So right now we're back and let's see how our eosinophil is now having her big moment. Oh, vomiting? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we see that they mention the vomiting center inside of the brain. So basically, the vomiting center is a little part that is outside of the brain, like you reaching out of the window to see if it's raining. And this is like the vomiting center. It's a little chemoreceptor that is outside of the brain and always reports what's going on in the blood and if there's something shady going on. Like if you drink too much alcohol, the levels of blood alcohol rise when our uh, chemoreceptor in the vomiting center recognizes it and that the values are going too high too quick, vomiting is induced. He knows. I love the moment in anime before a fight when the main character is just having a little, little grin on his face. Yes! <laughs> yeah, we spoke about it previously, but now again to repeat it. Those spears are like little hooks 
where eosinophils can attach to the parasite and then release cytotoxic factors inside and around the parasite to kill it from the inside. Not to phagocytose it, but to kill it. Yes! <laughs> this guy. Yeah, now you did stop making fun of her, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, what a great episode. I think this was my favorite so far. Not only because there are such cool mechanisms in it, but it also taught us a big lessons about how our life is going and how we need to appreciate everybody and that you have to find your purpose in life. Even though a lot of people expect different from you, you need to find your purpose in life and this is where you will flourish. Great episode, I'm, I'm super, super stunned by it. Little goosebumps by the end. Um, this was just great. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.